Welcome back to Soccer Card United. It's episode 202 of the greatest soccer card podcast in the world. My name is Jason. That's Enzo. Hi, Enzo. Hello, Jason. It's Christmas Eve. Yeah, happy Christmas Eve to you. Happy Christmas Eve to you. Um, you. This is our, our holiday uh, special. special. Yeah. Wow. Um, and very exciting announcement to make right at the top of the show. So the last couple of years, fans of the show will know, last couple of years, we've been joined on our Christmas episode. Uh, unexpectedly, both times, uh, Soccer Card Santa has dropped in oh, um, and caused chaos. I remember last year there was a, a, a Jude Sapphire variation and there was blood. Yeah, Jude Sapphire um, variation autograph, by the way. Yeah, autograph. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a PSA 10. And that was beautiful. That was, to be honest, that'll never be top. That'll never no. be top. Never. So That was truly magic. We've had the we've had the unexpected sock card Santa drop in a couple of times, and then this this year we're doing a Q and A, and I put out a call for the questions, and a lot of people sent in questions addressed to soccer card Santa directly. Yeah, which was not I I didn't prompt that I didn't say anything. People just took it upon themselves. Um, okay, yeah. It so wasn't I, I reached out to soccer card Santa's people. Okay. And uh, later on yeah, in the show, the yeah, get well. I say his people is little people with the pointy ears and um he's he's sitting out in the waiting room outside the studio and later on soccer card santa will be joining us to answer uh some of the listeners questions is that like another guest technically technically it's going to be we're we're breaking our guest schedule our, our guest policy for the ter- second time in three episodes wow and um, so watch out for that um in the We've meantime we delayed. have We've delayed oh. our restart. I'm going to call it a restarter guide, but a new our new starter guide will probably be in the new year. Yes, that is necessary. Yes. We have a lot of people recently that have been sending us episode 17, and it's like that is so outdated now. Like the hobby has changed dramatically yeah. since episode 17. So we are going to revamp that. We just we're not at it yet. Christmas season has us. I think we might and need to also... do a call to action as well for that one. Oh, like before we do it, kind of say to people what should be included in it, yes, in case we don't cover all bases. Yeah, I actually had a, a, an exciting idea for that for those starter guides that I forgot to tell you. Oh, oh. Um, but I'll tell you off the air. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I can't, I can't, uh, can't, can't let the listener in on this one just yet because one, it's one of those ideas that might be slightly over ambitious, but once I say it out loud, people won't let us not do it. So okay, okay, okay. To That's save nice. myself from locking into it, I'll tell you off the air. I'm writing that um, down. I want to remind you at the top of, at the end of the show. Yes, very good. We do have a lot of questions people sent in uh, for us and not for Soccer Card Santa. Uh, so happy to get to them. Just wanted to mention the Dublin Card Show is uh, now just... Oh, it's the 24th. So it's it's uh, two months away, exactly. Two months away, Japers. We've had a lot of people, shout out to them, flying in for it. We've had a lot of big flurry. I know we've talked yeah. about our friends in, in North America many, many a time, but we've had a flurry yeah. of Europeans send me flights booked, done, finished. Super, 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 super happy about that. And we excited. also, we also next... have people joining us from Asia. Yeah, from Asia as well, yeah. So the next two months are going to be insane in the Soccer Cards United HQ. Yeah. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. So, it's, Jason, it's definitely a time to enjoy the family over Christmas, over the new year. And then it's going to be blockbuster. Like I, I, I had a, we had an email. I was just going to read an email from an American based in Dublin, a dad. Yeah. He signed off his email as Desperate Dad. He mm. had bought some NFL NBA cards, presumably somewhere abroad, and they didn't make it in time for Christmas. And he sent us kind of a desperation email saying, do you have any NBA or NFL cards or do you know anybody that might be able to sort this out in time mm-hmm. for Christmas? I'm absolutely desperate. This is a sad. He's a desperate by, dad. Yeah, he's a desperate dad. And by happen chance, we had two blasters of NBA. We had last year's NBA Flux. Don't even know right. what that is. That brand i'm not familiar and this year's nba hoops blasters of course Victor oh, wow. and Yana, the, the two twins all these people love it so i actually i responded to him i said you know what i'll sort this guy out i responded yeah. to him i said listen by happen chance i have two blasters here's the photo of them all i'm not familiar with really anything i bought them for about 30 i don't even care 20 dollars 20 euro each i'll sort you out you tell me when suits you and yesterday on saturday i met up with this man christmas eve, eve. I, I quite you know but yeah, the soccer card Santa rubbing off on me, maybe. Absolutely. Him, shook his hand, gave him the blasters, said, listen, happy to help, delighted to help. By the way, there's going to be a card show in February. It's in, I told him in the convention center. He said, on the 
on the on the keys, like on the dot plans. And I said, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I told them we're going to have some some NBA guys because we obviously King of Hoops are coming and stuff like that. I said there's actually going to be NBA there. We have some some Americans that are coming over that yeah. we'll tell them bring your NBA, bring this that, and the other. And he was he was ecstatic about it. He said I'm absolutely going to come. So brilliant. Brick by brick, we're building this show, Jason. That's all I wanted to say. Happy Christmas to that man. I was happy to be able to help. Him. Well, that was very, that was very nice of you. Yeah, no and, doubt. Um, yeah. Sorry, I've just dropped something here. Oh my god, I dropped the ball, oh. this fella. Okay, here I am. Um, so let's get into these questions. Thank you to everyone who's continuing to support the Dublin Card Show. We'll see you in a couple of months. Excited. Uh, and by the way, if you have any last minute, this is dropping today. If you have any last minute uh, stocking fillers that you need to give, don't forget you can always go to dublincardshow.com, get a couple of tickets. And, oh. uh, you know, for any. Um, did you see somebody, just very quickly, did you see somebody commented on a Facebook post on the Sock Cards United page and said, What's a card show? Yeah, was that like. Um someone within our facebook group seen it or was it like a post that like the the wider facebook community stumbled across the wider facebook community stumbled across it and he said what uh, is a card show and to be honest i mentally thought of what to respond with and i never got to it and then you responded with exactly what i was going to do which was sending him a catalog playlist of all of our card shows yeah and then he said some people just never grow up wow that's that's yeah. not nice that wasn't nice no it was a facebook troll is he and he was old an old man an old man should know better. If they, maybe his mother never told him, although she must be long dead, given how old he was, yeah, uh, that if he couldn't say anything nice, don't Same say anything old. at all. Yeah. You know, maybe that's anyway. a man that grew up too fast, lost his charm, lost a twinkle in his eye. That's right. Yeah. Christmas. You, you don't. You don't. You don't Christmas. stop playing. Uh, you don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Something to think about this Christmas. Um. Speaking of the card show, our first question for the Q and A. Uh, comes from our friend Dado Stax, uh, who's attending yeah. the card show. From North and America, by the way. From North LA. America. Is that right? LA? Specifically Los Angeles, yeah. Yeah. And is. um the question is this. He says, I'm a card show newbie and I'm thinking about getting a table for the Dublin card show, but never have. Uh would you recommend what would you recommend for an easy setup? Any customs concerns bringing product in and transaction recommendation as a seller? So how if I'm traveling to the Dublin card show and uh, for the setup, how would I take payments, and uh, would I have to? How's my custom situation? I don't want to give any advice on the custom situation. Um, yeah, I would say just don't have your cards. Podcast. Don't have your cards priced pre. Like, don't have like we, we kind of had that where like we had like a Ronaldo that was priced at five thousand, which was very uh, optimistic pricing anyway. But then we went through customs; they were like five thousand, and I was like, oh no, no, please, no, no, that's actually completely yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe don't price it because it's like a weird balance between you want to have everything priced. So maybe price everything in an Excel would be better than to have it physically on the cards on the day. Um, and yeah. payment acceptance. I think that's probably the most important thing. Like I think one of the easiest things if you're bringing just cards, that's easier to obviously transport travel. Boxes can get a bit finicky. They can get damaged. They take up more space. So cards, cards, cards. I would definitely say for a show like Dublin, you would have your slabs. You could like don't shy away from the lower end cards. We kind of seen that Comic Con, which is obviously different than a card show, but like. People love lower end of kind of popular players, popular people, popular athletes. Uh, payment acceptance, I think, is probably the most important thing. Like, I'm trying to think of what we have done because we've obviously dealt with different currencies in different countries. I'm trying to think yeah. if you're American coming over to Ireland, what's the easiest? So obviously, cash is the easiest. Not everyone's going to have cash with them. Um, PayPal is good, but you're losing money on EDL exchange rate because if you have a US PayPal, it's going to kind of fuck up with the currency. Um, I don't know if you yeah. can get we, Revolut. We tend to use Stripe. Yeah, but can you use Stripe just as a person? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm not sure what the tax implications are, but I, I've used Stripe as an individual before. Um, okay. So I would say we're probably close to the time because we're going to have a lot of international attendees maybe send out an email to the vendors g giving a few options on how to, you know, payment yeah. information and all that. And we are going to make sure that there's a, an ATM on site. Yeah. Um because you'd be surprised that some card shows don't have an ATM anywhere. And sometimes when someone doesn't, like, it could be as simple as somebody uh, not having a uh, phone signal, you know, mm -mm. Like, uh, or, or not, or like, you know, cause you're maybe, especially if you're traveling, you might be like, Oh, my phone, my internet isn't working here. So can yeah, I just the Wi-Fi in and... the venue is going to be good though. That's true. There's Wi-Fi in the important. venue. Well, yeah, but, I think we'll think about it. Cause like we could potentially intervene in some way there. Like, could we, set up our own like payment acceptance like it's actually just for like the americans there's not that many 
set up our own thing and then give them dollars. We, we'll figure that out. That's yeah, we, we'll figure out uh, what licenses we need to uh, apply have for. To become to... a bank. Yeah, we'll get our banking license and that'll be that. Yeah, should be fine. That <laughs> I mean, is, how long yeah. will it take to get a banking license? But like, worst case scenario, use PayPal. You'll lose money on fees and it'll be a bit shitty. But it's not like for the it'll work. You know what I mean? Like yes. it will ultimately it'll work. You'll get less of PayPal, knowing, but it'll work. And and eBay have that in common. Yeah. Uh, where it's like, yeah, okay, you might lose a bit here, a bit there. and But ultimately, you know, you what are. eBay say is ultimately find a marketplace that's going to put you in touch with as many buyers as we do. And PayPal say find a payment acceptance platform that's going to work as easily around the world as we do. Yeah. And yes, we take a cut, but that's because we're the best in the <laughs> game. Yeah, we're the best. We can. That's why. But yeah, yeah, worst case scenario, you're on PayPal. Hopefully, we can organize something that makes that less of a financial effort. Yeah. Um. So uh, I think we have another question, maybe for Soccer Card Santa later on from from Dado Stacks, multiple contributor today to today's show. Wow. Um. Bart's Card Kingdom asks uh, specifically Kareem Adiemi, uh, who we know as a member of the Jude class, uh, mm-hmm. broke out uh, at Red Bull Salzburg, German youngster. I believe uh, went through the Bayern Munich Academy, then went to Red Bull, is now at Borussia Dortmund. Um, what is going? What does Kareem Adiemi do after this season? I didn't realize because I'd wonder why Adiemi had been so quiet. I did not realize just how many injuries he has had since he's been at Dortmund. Really? It's um, it's quite. I'll be read you some of his uh, his uh, his stuff here. Yeah. So in 2018, 19, he was out for 30 days with an ankle injury. Then in 2019-20, he was out for 18 days with a torn muscle fiber. The Jude class year, 2020-21, he had 11 days out for muscular problems. And and in the first three or four years of his career at junior and breaking into senior, that was all he had. He had three injuries. He was out for a total of 60 days. Okay. Right? Since then, in um, 21-22, he had one, two, three, four injuries. Um, and then in 22, 23, he had one, two, three, four injuries again and was out for a total of ooh, like 80 days. Um, okay. And he's just missed a uh, couple of days this season so far. But he's developed kind of an injury prone um, this thing, which is very, very worrying. Yeah, something that you don't notice. Everyone's always talking about Ansu Fahi or Pedri or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, I suppose keep an eye on him and see if he gets injured again this season. So I guess what he, what does he need to do? He needs to stay fit. He needs um, to stay fit. Yeah, the Jude class is fascinating. I think there's another question in here about the Jude class uh, later on. But mm. it is a fascinating one because people are kind of popping up, coming in, coming out. I think we have seen a tremendous amount of injuries for those players, partially yeah. because they've played so much, mainly. Um, you know, Doku has been in and out of injury before moving to Man City. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Pedri has had his problems. Gavi is now having problems. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. A lot of football. Um, I mean, obviously, it's important to remember these guys are so young. Like Adiemi is only twenty-one, so he wouldn't be expecting him as a forward. He wouldn't be expecting him to hit his peak for another five years anyway. Yeah, sure. Um, and we're not really expecting players to have this kind of uh, ten or fifteen year period of dominance as much as we as we exit the Messi Ronaldo era. That's kind of a, yeah. something we're all gonna have to adjust to, I think. Yeah, I think I was thinking about that the other day about like Juan Alinho, how much of an icon he was, but then that as he was kind of tapering out, the Messi Ronaldo era happened that made him look almost like an average player. Because he only had a couple of years of absolute top, top, top and he was magical and like our generation just think of him as like this yeah. incredible player. But you think about like Messi Ronaldo did after that and it's like this is a different level completely. Yeah, because it's doing that year after year after year. For a silly, um, silly amount of time. Do you see, actually, this is actually exciting. When people always talk about documentaries and stuff like that, and will this impact the price of players and stuff like that. On the 30th of December, Jason, I don't know if you've seen this, the official FIFA World Cup uh, movie is Film. coming out. Yeah, yeah. you know, they, they do that after every World Cup. But yeah. this one's coming out on Netflix and seems to have a lot more. It's almost like a mm. modern, I don't want to say drive to survive, but I think they've taken that proper... It's the FIFA World Cup kind of videos as we remember them, but I think it has a lot more juiced into it. I'm super excited They've to watch it. They've juiced it up. And I think that could actually, I don't want to say help the price of cards, but I do think something definitely worth watching. I think it's going to be a, a bit of World Cup nostalgia never hurt anybody. Yeah, 100%. Um, for Adiemi, I'm going to just make a, a prediction in terms of when he could break out. Now, obviously, Borussia Dortmund got out of their uh, Champions League group. He scored oh, right. in the last right. game against PSG. 
And um, I'm just saying. Uh, no, we, we scored against Milan as well. I swear to God, I didn't set that up. He did. He did. Uh, so, but of course, uh, he re- previously won the uh, under 21 Euros with uh, Germany in 2021. And next year, 2024, the senior European Championships are in Germany. Yeah. So I would say that is kind of his next window to make a big opportunity if he doesn't do something in the knockout stage of the Champions League this year. And from a hobby point of view, tops have the license for that tournament, which is just interesting to point out. Yeah. So there's probably actually going to be more hobby interest in the Euros than there usually will than there usually has been the last couple of times because people are used to the Panini Euro products and we love a bit of novelty. So and also like, the last Euros was just a disaster because COVID and they got delayed a year and it became this weird thing yeah. that they there was select like, and then there was mosaic or it feels like the first Euro since twenty sixteen, you know, in terms of hobby mm. product. Because mm. the twenty twenty just was forgotten about completely. That yeah. does feel like the first Euro since 2016. Well, there we go. Um, don't let any other Italy fans hear you say that. Listen, it, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I love, I love Italy. I collect PC. There's no, never really a part of me that says I want to start collecting really nice cards from Euro Select 2020. It's like this weird. Mm. I almost reject it in the hobby for like a no real reason. I don't know. I think the checklists were weird and stuff like that. There was like people on yeah. it where you're like, he didn't play. That wasn't. He wasn't there. Yeah. yeah, true. Um, okay, Trace and Chase uh, has a question. What is the future of the soccer card market with so many competitions coming up? And what is your favorite pickup of the year? So, um, I suppose uh, we do the first bit first, and then we can think of our favorite pickup of the year as we're talking about that. What do you mean? Or do you so have a favorite pick of the year? I have my favorite pickup of the year right beside me. Go ahead, tell us that, and then I'll talk about the competitions thing. Tell us what that card is because we can't really see it. Yeah, I hate that. Um, one second. This is a 2016 select. There we go. A we 2016 nice. select Andrea Pirlo gold uh, patch autograph. Yeah. So it's beautiful. Number to 10 gold Pirlo in an Italy kit. Love, love, love Pirlo. Love the old school selects. Love the gold, hmm. obviously. That's just a PC card I picked up. I never really had. I had a couple of nice Pirlos, but this is definitely now my favorite Pirlo that I own. Um, I think it's my favorite pickup. There has been a lot of pickups, to be honest, so it's kind of hard to yeah, it's... pick it out. I didn't want to write a big list, so that's kind of what I have as my favorite pickup. I have a feeling I know what your favorite pickup is. Um, but yeah, that's definitely mine. Andrea Pirlo. I mean, I, apparently wanted to do the Kubo on-card autograph, but I don't think that counts as a pickup as it was like a physical. Mm. Got it. Got it physically, like maybe it is. I don't know. But I think that's mine. Top of my head, that's mine. Yeah, I don't know if I... <sighs> I feel like you're I'm, forgetting what your one is. Am I forgetting the Robbie Kane? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really. Uh, uh, that's for. This yeah. is one of my favorite as well. Oh, it's terrible. I can't see that either. I know. The sun is, is happening. This is a one of one Neymar. Oh, from yeah. 2018 yeah, that. Yeah. Donruss. That was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we, we picked up a lot of high high end women's cards, which was pretty cool, but I don't think any of them are my favorite. We do have an L5 Katie McCabe Sapphire. That could be. Mm. Be one for you. Um, what I did when I was trying to remember that was I went through our Instagram page. Oh, um, I had a look at the pickups. Yeah, I was like, what did we pick up? This, yeah, this year. But it is hard. But for me, it's a period. I think that's just PC. It's nice. It's fun. And um, no, obviously, enough. we I tan up on my We picked up that was beautiful. I think the Robbie Keane. I think it's it's hard for you not to say the Robbie Keane. Come on, what what are you? Yeah, I don't really. I'm just. I'm not really. Uh, I don't want to get into why I'm not mad on Robbie Keane at the minute. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I don't want to get into it, but uh, yeah. So anyway, um, I want to answer the question about the club, co- with the competitions coming up, because I don't know if you saw it, but they're expanding the Club World Cup. And... I've seen that they're changing the format of the Champions League. Have you heard about that? Yeah, we talked about it on the show. Sorry. Have you heard about it? I told you about it. <laughs> yeah, they're moving to the Swiss format, but after the Super League thing the other day, they've said they might move back to the group stage thing. Fair play. Um because they're afraid that if they they're afraid of basically what everyone said which is like well you're also messing up the competition so if you're if you're going to change it to, to, because you want more games between the top clubs and the super league is going to start the super league because they want more games between the top clubs however the only difference is the clubs would keep the money in the super league version and you'd keep the money in the uefa version how is that any different so you have to be like oh no we were going to get rid of that anyway and go back to the old one so who knows yeah, we were going to um, do our own thing. Can I say, I also got a Kaka Raphael Leo booklet 
um, from Inception, Red of yeah. Ten. That's a beautiful card. That was the last one the card show. Yeah, I've yet to put it into a proper holder, so I almost don't. And also, sorry, the all the gold prisms is one of my favorite pickups. Yes, I would say in terms of momentous hobby moments, uh, I'd go for that. Yeah, picking up all was, of those gold prism from 2014 and 2016. Yeah, that was an extraordinary moment. That's definitely up there for sure. Yeah. Or do you know what? Actually, I don't know. Oh, another one. Yeah. At the last national on the last day, we picked up a load of 2016 selects PSA 10 base cards of Messi Ronaldo. We also picked up a red prism select Messi that was raw. We yep. subsequently graded it and got a 10. And they were 2015 selects, weren't they? Sorry, 2015. Because we graded it and got a PSA 10 on that red Messi. That yeah. kind of became like I felt like that's the hobby, you know. I went there, flicked mm. through, got a good deal, graded it, somehow got a ten. I really shouldn't have got a ten, and then I was like, "This is this is class." And we sold that yeah. in Germany, made someone really happy, and it's like, that's what's meant to happen, you know what I mean? That's like, we look, did it's it. not hard. You fly to America, you get the deal done, you fly home, you send it's it to PSA, easy. you get it back. Yeah, it's not difficult. Um, but like, that's not that difficult. Kind of get me a good buzz just to get that ten on that. Um. I was going to say the Arsene Wenger is in, has some weird job in FIFA and keeps going up with all these terrible ideas that are slowly tarnishing his uh, reputation. Reputation, but uh, one of the things they want to do is expand the Club World Cup, and I personally really like the Club World Cup. Uh, I just think it's like a cool, like crossover event kind of thing, and it's been on at the yeah. minute. And uh, I was watching it the other day. I was watching um, uh, Arawa Reds against uh, Al Ali in the third place playoff, and I was like, why is there no set for this? Mm. Why is what, come on? It's this is like you have the FIFA license, and Panini just announced they're 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 extending their license with FIFA, and yeah. and I think like if if they won't do a Club World Cup set now, maybe in twenty twenty five when there's an expanded one and you have more teams in it, they will do a set. But I just think that's great. Like the old like we opened the twenty sixteen seventeen Donruss a few months ago, and you get like Boca Juniors and Panathinaikos, and like you get like interesting stuff. Instead of just always the same uh, teams, that's fair. That's a um, because it's perfectly legitimate to be a you know a Tigres fan in Mexico. You don't have to support Real Madrid, like. And it's like as well. I don't know if Neymar back in the day was part of the Club World Cup when he was at Santos, but it's like you could end up kind of finding, especially Brazilian, like little rookie. Definitely. Characters. Well, you had like for uh, Fluminense, you had maybe. Andre playing uh, in the defensive midfield, and he's probably going to move to the Premier League. Very soon. Last year, you would have had uh, Hendrik playing uh, yeah. for Palmeiras. So and like, I don't know if Julian Alvarez ever got there, but I think he might have been. Maybe. He maybe did he move before, or did he? I think he stayed until the club did the Club World Cup and then left. I don't know. Maybe that was. The, I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway, he definitely won a trophy, I believe. Was... Well, he won. He won everything. He won, and he won the Libertadores. Oh, no. So River were definitely in it, but I don't know if. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But, like, but it is... can happen basically as well yeah. as just being cool. You could get yeah. nice rookies too. Yeah. It's I just and you're always getting one of the big European or a couple of the big European teams, so it's like there's it's it's just make it what's yeah. what's not to what's not to like? Yeah, I guess and in terms of growing well, the hobby internationally, yeah. You see you see Panini some of their checklists with like they struggle to put together a fucking Premier League checklist. Don't mind the fucking yeah, 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 checklist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. I, I mean you're talking I'm, about Euro twenty twenty being fucked, like they're not gonna I'm dreaming not gonna, you're dreaming. That's it, you're I'm dreaming. dreaming. Yeah. But with Panini kind of losing a lot of their licenses, they're kind of swinging, and they might that might be something they have to do. They might go, you know what? This will help us yeah. create something. There you go. You so there's an idea the for anyone. Yeah, another one. Create lean all on. product and get a FIFA Club World Cup product on the go. Come on. Yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? Irish card collector also asked, uh, "What's been your highlight for? What's been each of your highlights 2023 and your favorite pickup uh, throughout the year?" So I guess we've already covered the pickup thing and the gold prisms was a highlight. highlight for you. Definitely a highlight for me. Yeah, no, that's um, fair. I can't think of what anything else beyond that. A highlight? We weren't. Hmm. This wasn't the year we were on TV, was it? <laughs> no, <laughs> that was last year. <laughs> when was uh, that? Oh my god! Yeah, uh, yeah. highlight for me getting a silver membership for Erlingus. That was big. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a big moment. We've traveled to big enough card shows. Yeah, uh, traveled to enough card shows that now I get a fast track at Dublin Airport. That means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, Frosinone coming up and being really good has made me very happy. Yes, uh, I would say Dublin Comic Con trying to bring the hobby to the Irish people that are not uh, going to a card show but going to Dublin Comic Con and trying to explain it to them. That was fun. And our trade nights, I was going to say. 
trade nights as well. The pastry is going on match. Yeah. And to be honest, actually, do you know what? I have one, Jason. You haven't even thought of it. I'm about to let me pick up my pen real quick. Oh, God. I haven't even thought of it. The National in Chicago. That was after experiencing our first ever National Atlantic City and just feeling dirty. Yeah. The National in Chicago was wholesome, fun, yeah. enjoyable, an absolute pleasant experience interacting with everyone and being in Chicago. That for me, 100%. Rosemont has my heart. I want to go back to another National in Chicago. That was peak. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. It was just just good. It was really, 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 really good. That was definitely a highlight for me. Like Cleveland next year, I don't know how I'm going to feel about it. I don't, I don't know. I'm just going in blind again. But then the following year, I think it's back in Chicago. That for me, I'm, mm. like, I'm actually looking forward to that. I'm like, that's going to be great. Yeah, I would say that was a, that was Chicago was a highlight. Yeah, it was a whole series of highlights. A whole 100%. week of highlights. An entire week of just blockbuster highlights. I had a very good time. Yeah. Um, Scotland Card Show wants to add, wants to know, and maybe we've covered this in the show before. So if we have, we won't. We'll just keep it all very brief. Uh, how do we meet? We met in college. Yeah. That, so take, that. take the take the the charm out of that story, Jason. Yeah, I just because I think we've told it before. I don't want to go over it again. First day of college. That's all I'll say. We met on the first day of college, and here we are. Here we are. Um, here's an interesting uh, thing. If Jason and Enzo never made Soccer Cards United, but we're doing an alternative business together, what would that business be? Now, I personally think that business would be hosting the world's biggest Frosinone Calcio podcast. Uh, podcast. Yeah, we, we stopped doing that podcast just as we built uh, absolute momentum and beat Napoli 4-0 on the light. Yeah, we stopped and... doing that to do this i think that we i think in an alternative universe uh me and jason are a kind of like eddie howe and your man that's beside eddie howe on the on the bench jason tindall jason tindall as like two managers two co-managers yeah uh, managing up the ranks in in maybe league of Ireland, trying to get a big break in England. oh yeah all right yeah tacticians is what i'm going to say yeah in another life in another life where tacticians were like jose Mourinho going mad at kavicha cavacelia yesterday for no yeah. reason whatsoever, grabbing him, grabbing him by yeah, the just head. grabbing his head, going ah, and then winning yeah. two nil and going, well, that's what we do. Yeah, so yeah. I would yeah, say yeah. either we would have been getting our coaching licenses or we'd be getting our referee licenses, one of the two. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Or maybe our maybe we'd be uh, directors of football somewhere. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah, you could be like Arsene Wenger. You could wear a big coat and come up with bad ideas. I could definitely uh, have some kind of classic Arsene Wenger can't zip it up moments. Hundred percent. Oh yeah. Oh my. Oh God. yeah. I mean, oh, absolutely. Listen, yeah. Clumsy as the world. Yeah. On the sidelines of a League of Ireland game, screaming at people and people saying, You've never even played the game. Yeah. You know? Why why it's are they like, why well, do they think they know so much? Yeah. I can see Roy Keane giving all this about what yeah. saying. They're not football, they're not proper players. football men. They're not football no. people. Get get rid of them. That's what's wrong with the league. Yeah. Say. People we kind of be like a Andre Villas Boas uh, kind of figure. Mm. Or your man for is it Nice? What's your man? Uh, Ginger Farioli. No, oh, no, no, no. We'll, we'll still, we'll still for rounds. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for rounds. There you go. We could be like him. People going, this fella's fucking football manager head. Look, I'm just yeah. Out. And we could just people, be like, people be all the tweets. Yeah. Every time Jason ends up manage a game, they have to pay twenty grand to UEFA or whatever. Yeah. There you go. That's us. That's us. Um, not, not a bad. Uh, not a bad, not bad life, I'm sure. Yeah, we'd be enjoying it. Lance the rapper asks. Are there any players from a previous rookie class that you think will have a resurgence in the new year? Uh, Jonathan David, Yusuf Makoku, Charles de Ketelaer, etc. I have Who's a sleeping this. giant of the rookies. Talk to me, Jason. Who do you think? It's not necessarily a sleeping giant, but it's just someone I want to give a shout out to, uh, which is uh, Joshua Xerxes. You may mm. remember from back in the day, Joshua, Joshua Xerxes was at Bayern Munich. Uh, highly yeah, rated his rookie Rumsfeld. cards. His uh, rookie cards rookie are Bayern. Card. Who's he playing for now again? I've been seeing He's him playing recently. for Bologna, who are Bologna. Uh, fourth in Syria uh, under the management well, yeah. of Thiago Motta. And uh, they they bought uh, him Xerxes in the summer. And uh, he's in 2022, sorry. And he's having quite a good season. Seven goals and two assists uh, in 17 matches uh, so far this season. He's the number nine for Bologna. And he's doing very, very well. Okay, okay. That's a good answer. I'm um, still unconditionally a Mukoko believer. I'll die yeah. on that sword. I think he's so young. I think he's scoring goals still. He's still good. He's quality. Um, he's being, I think, well looked after. So I'm still a believer in him, whether or not that's yeah. 
delusional or not, I don't know. I think he has really nice rookie cards um, in yeah. Bundesliga Chrome. Uh, and obviously Champions League Chrome. I think that's my pick. Um, Lance mentioned Jonathan David, who has been linked with uh, the likes of Milan and various Premier League clubs loads of different times. I feel like Lille can't really decide whether to sell him and get the money or wait and hope he starts scoring again because he's, he's starting a lot, a lot of games on the bench and stuff at the minute. Um, but he's one that if he was to move somewhere and start scoring goals because of the Canadian thing, yeah, his prices would shoot up pretty quickly. 100%. Do you think, you, are you allowed to say Mbappe for that? No. Uh, yeah, I you still believe I, I believe in Mbappe. Like, I have a few friends that are picking up a lot of his work with Prism Colored and still really going, let's do it. Yeah. Um, I think him, obviously, Julian Alvarez, I still don't think has hit the heights despite winning everything. Yeah. I think he still has exciting a lot in him. ahead. Yeah, I think so. Uh, um, I, I will think say, he has, yeah. I just think he has cool cards that are underpriced. He has a million cool cards that are all. Kind. I mean, the reason they're underpriced is because there's a million of them. So why are they underpriced? I don't know. Yeah. But like picking up an off 10 of him is is a good move, I think. Um, I'll give a shout out to one of last year's rookies, 22-23, uh, which is uh, Luis Openda, um, who is now at Orby Leipzig, was previously at Lons, I think, um, but has more goals in uh, the Bundesliga this season than highly touted uh, by Leverkusen forward Victor, Bonif- Victor Boniface. Um, and only okay. has, and I love this, only has one rookie card, and it's 2022-23 FIFA Select in a Belgium kit. I like that a lot. So he's someone that, that, you know... Yeah, the limited rookie cards always helps the player, obviously. It can all flow in. It can all come together. That's a good one. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, just... there's loads, and it's hard to remember. <laughs> yeah, it's getting, it's getting tough. It's getting harder. It's hard, and it's getting harder. Um, I was actually thinking about this, just on that topic. So... You know, like back in the day with soccer, when we started, um, like you people didn't really know the players. So yeah, you could, like, if you knew the players, you had an edge. And then it got to the point where there was no edge because everybody knew the players. Yeah. But now there are so many cards you back that there's an edge players. again. Mm. I respect that. Yeah, I believe it. Like, I think that's kind of a, there's a. It's you, been a crazy two to three years in the hobby, 100%, yeah. for soccer especially. And I do think, I keep hearing people talk about like hockey as the next big thing, and, and like in terms of like you have your kind of NBA, your baseball, maybe your football card. What's the fourth one and stuff like that? The fact that soccer isn't just an absolute shoe in for the fourth one and going to be higher than that just always makes me feel very kind of at ease. Yeah, because the fact that like they don't see it yet, yeah, means it's crazy. We're still early, super, super, super early. Yeah, which is like weird because it feels like we're not. It feels like we're deep in, but it's like. There's gems to be picked up still. There's kind of not not necessarily just rookie cards. Like there's iconic sets. There's iconic players. Obviously, um, it's interesting. I mean, when you think about see, like how's it gonna how's it all gonna shake out? You know, there's the whole thing with um, the MLS and the the Open Cup, uh, where the MLS wanted to send their uh, their youth teams, basically the next uh, teams, to play in this uh, Open Cup. And U.S. Soccer said, "No, you can't. You have to compete in it with your senior teams, um, and all this stuff." And now there was, I saw also just talk about what is MLS going to introduce promotion relegation? Um, are they going to maybe acquire a different league, acquire the USL, and bring that in the second league? All this stuff. So when you think about how early in terms of uh, the actual organization of soccer in the states, like as long as they're not doing promotion relegation at professional level, we're early. But then on the flip side, you kind of see like the European Super League was trying to bring the almost American version to obviously now they're talking about relegation stuff, but they were trying to take that American because obviously the American kind of version of, of playoffs and stuff like that is also helps the hobby. So it's like an absolute highlight. Yeah, it, it does. Um, but it doesn't. I think what we need for soccer is to grow the sport because we've kind of seen like at this stage, we, there's, there's enough soccer collectors who are comfortable with the that's sport that. who don't worry about the fact that there's no playoffs. Yeah, that's fair. You know. There's the Champions League. Well, there's a World Cup for for one. Yeah, the World Cup is so different. I I hope they never make that every two years, whatever the fuck they're trying Me to too. do. Like every four years makes it this yeah. crazy, crazy tournament. See, like Suarez going special. to going to the MLS, um, even though he needs to inject his knees just to play. Yeah, jeez, that's oh, gonna be mad. It's gonna be mad. very exciting. Brilliant. Um, all right. Uh, Jay Tennant has a question. Merry Christmas from the states. Merry Christmas to you. 
Uh, so, what kind of bump in women's soccer cards do you expect from the Olympics compared to the World Cup? Also, anyone in particular on soccer card Santa's not a nice list. The soccer card Santa's not here, but um, um, I think I don't really know what the World Cup will do. I mean, the the oh, Olympics. The Olympics, yeah. Um, definitely another yeah. period to highlight the game. I don't think it'll be the same as the World Cup, but I think if players who have cards and rookie cards are featuring in that tournament, there will be attention on it, of course. I think the major advantage for the Olympics is that it's another opportunity for the US women's team to do well. Because that was that was basically the thing missing in terms of the card market and the World Cup was the women's team, the US women's team didn't do well. Um, so that meant that your biggest card collecting market is not really super invested in the World Cup. Or engaged. Or engaged. So, you know, if it had been, if it was a USA Spain final, you know, like if 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 the World Cup product wasn't paper card. Yeah, all sorts of different stuff going on. Um, has the demand for women's cards really increased over the whole year with more sets being produced? No, no. This, oh, this is sorry. This is Mark asking a also women's question. Has the demand for women's cards really increased over the whole year with more sets being produced? And do you see this as a potential growth market within the hobby? Well, I should certainly hope so. It's definitely a growth market, I think. Uh, has demand gone up? I don't think so. And I, I mean, it might have, but I feel like the supply went so high that you didn't really see a demand increase. Like yeah, we, we used to be really, we were very successful at shows with uh, some women's knockout cards that used to always really fly. And then you had obviously Chrome come out, Sapphire come out, and the Women's World Cup come out. Then the, to a point where there was so many kind of cards. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the demand increase matched the supply necessarily. But I do think, is it a potential growth market? 100%. I think it was a real vintage year for women's cards. Yeah. And I mean, we talk about oftentimes soccer having the lack of a mid range mm-hmm. where the high end cards do well, the low end cards do well, but those cards that are kind of in the hundred to thousand category don't really do that well. And um, I would say women's is an extreme example of that. Like you'll sell, you know, five and 10 euro women's cards all day. Um, and you'll sell to us a uh, four figure uh, women's cards. Yeah. We're the buyer of the four figure cards, And we buy all the four figure ones. But that kind of bit in the middle where it's like it's an all five. I'm gonna so I'm gonna charge you a minimum of, of two hundred. No one like people are not really willing to pay at this stage. Yeah, that much of a premium on most players. And um, so you need more kind of people collecting the sets, doing rainbows, things like that. Yeah, makes sense. But definitely a growth market potential. Definitely, especially definitely. this year's product. There was a lot of cool rookies in it. That I think two three years time could be really really sought after. Yeah. Um, also, Mark asked, any changes you noticed at card shows this year compared to when you first started going to them? So this, I guess, is our second year going, going to card shows regularly. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I feel like we've got better at card showing. Um, yeah. But I don't know if I've seen many changes, really. I don't know. Top of my head. I think people are definitely more used to... Uh, they've, they've seen more. They're more used to... Nego- this is in terms of European card shows, obviously. <laughs> um it's different in the states, but people are more used to negotiating, I think. Um, mm-hmm. and they've for us anyway, because we trade, um, yeah. The difference I've seen is that people are now instead of stumbling across us and saying, uh, oh, you, you, oh, you trade, oh, okay, yeah, they're like walking up to us and being like, I just got here, let's do some trades, and um, yeah, use again, let's go, yeah. So that's probably a pretty personal answer, and um, yeah, fair. I feel like people are getting smarter. I guess they're more. I don't know. People are the people attending shows have been to many shows now. I guess to, to what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, everyone's like experience. It's, it's it's maturing. It's maturing definitely. And uh, the food options are getting better at every time because yeah, card shows. Like, that's one of the things. Like on the card instead of the attendees, but the actual card show levels, there's a bit of a arms race going on. And so it's like, oh, we have this, we have that. So they're getting better. Is the answer, I guess. Yeah. The quality of the shows are getting better every day. Yeah. Um, no, none more so than the Dublin Card Show coming February 24th. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Um, all right. So I guess ET Leeds and Scotland Card Show both asked, what's your favorite card show you've been to this year? I guess the National. Yeah, definitely Chicago. I'm thinking of like Frankfurt. That was for the food. If I just ignored the show, me, you and Faye in Frankfurt had, had an amazing time. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I, I would say sure. Chicago, yeah. Chicago was different. Um, okay. 
Lost Cards asks, what are your most underrated product releases from recent years? Most underrated, underrated product releases from recent years. That's a tough one. Um, I think maybe Jude Class Museum was super yeah. underrated. Uh, I mm -hmm. think people just don't respect Museum the way they should. It makes no sense. It's one of the more premium soccer products, mm -hmm. especially from Tops. That was definitely super underrated, I believe. Um, I think part of me wants to say Women's Sapphire, but I'm not sure if that's that's about if that's fair, correctly yeah. rated. Yeah, kind of correctly rated. I mean, this Disney, this new Disney people. Hey, let's talk about mm. that. Yeah, um, Carnival. I feel like that was a weird one. Like people like that a lot, but I understand it's a paper product, so so there's like, always going to be a, a limit on a limit. Yeah, but like four low number to seventy five or less is always fun. Yeah. Um. Hmm. I'm 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 struggling here to to. I'm looking at our website. Oh, you know what I'll say. Oh, what do you go ahead? No, you I, was not, I think you're going to say what I'm going to say. I was going to say PSG Chrome. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. PSG Chrome. That just came out so high. But, like, yeah, PSG Chrome in hindsight, when you think it was released the year that Messi and Mbappe both ended up in a World Cup final shootout amongst each other. Yeah. That is a set that could have a weird nostalgia in the future for high-end people, very specific people. Yeah. Um, but obviously, PSG kids versus, you know, I don't know. I know, uh, yeah. I know. I was going to say that Tops put out a Barcelona winner's set that had a guaranteed autograph. Um, I thought yes. that was like underrated, but like underrated to a very small demo, which is also why it's underrated, so not really. Do you know? Yeah, I will say like the the thing I've been talking about for a long time is that the Jude Class Champions League Chrome is underrated. I know it's 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 all print, it's printed print to the lines moment. and there's it's a million, up. but like the QC is so bad that the print run actually isn't that big. Like the pops are never going to be that big because the yeah, print yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, stadium club from that year because a case you get a guaranteed image variation. That's super cool. But I feel like those products are like rising now. You know, finally. Well, I think rising they were underrated now, for like, a very long time. Yeah. But now they're kind of moving, which is cool. And um, I'm just looking through our website and stuff that's sold out. I don't really see. Mm. There's nothing jumping out at me on this. Is absolutely wild. Um. I don't know, but what about the Panini Selects this year? They obviously got so much love, but like, are they underrated? Will they be in isolation in four or five years' time? We look back and go. I think early mad. Panini Select is underrated. One hundred percent. Early Panini product is underrated. That's that's. I, I would say just actually, I'll I'll, I'll expand it as well. Pre twenty twenty product in general is underrated. Wow. Like What's stuff like twenty eighteen nineteen tops Chrome and things like that. Like that's all brilliant. <laughs> that's all wonderful. The old stuff is just cool. The old stuff is underrated. It just is. It's absolutely underrated. That makes sense. Because it, it's not vintage. It's not like you don't have to. It's not a kind of half peeled off sticker of Eusebio. Like it's yeah. a Topps Chrome or a Panini Select, you know. Um, Masterclass. It's good. And it's people are paying more for new products that are coming out. And I, it's, That's it's, always the way, though. I know. But just the stuff you look at and you go, how is that that price? It should be more expensive than that. Um, so anyway, okay. Um, Dado Stax is back uh, okay. to ask Has Jason chosen the pastries for the Dublin card show? Mm. We've outsourced that, that, I think. Yeah, that'll be locked in, I think, on the 4th of January for those under. <laughs> We've a meeting with the pastry chef. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at some, but there's not going to be a Dublin trade night style, uh, you know, free platter of pastries going around. <laughs> I don't think so, no. I think no. That's Although part somebody of the... asked us that at the time. When yeah, we I know. The show. But like, we're going to... Uh, so at the moment, it's looking like a Friday night trade night, um, followed by the show on the Saturday, maybe a bit of a reception mixer, potentially Saturday night, and then maybe some activities on the Sunday. We're, we're trying to have that all organized. Whether or not there's going to be pastries at any or all of those events remains to be, to be seen. You might just have to show up and hope. You might have to show up and hope, yeah. Any That's pastries it. will be bonus pastries. They won't be. Uh, They're uh, not no base, pastries in your contract, basically. Yeah. Um. Also, uh, Dado Snacks wants to know what rookie from the 2023 24 uh, class is off to a good start. So what I did was I just took this uh, pile of base cards that I have from Deco. Wonderful. The day, and just kind of went through it. So you have like the likes of, just I'll see who I recognize, and if I recognize them, they're probably going okay. Uh, yeah. Jan yeah. Oral Bisek there for for Inter. Um, I believe got man of the match yesterday versus uh, Lecce. Um, Julian Duranville, 
a highly rated youngster Dortmund got in from Belgium, but has been injured since he signed. Uh, Oscar Glock uh, scored a goal or two in the Champions League for uh, RB Salzburg. You never know with a Salzburg player no, if never. they're going to go on or not. Um, we haven't really had one hit the heights since Haaland. No, Haaland's an absolute anomaly, especially with we his age. We talked about Adeyemi earlier. We have Sesco as well. Uh, you know, they're not really lighting the place up. Oscar Hoyland is the younger brother of Rasmus Hoyland, who I believe could be the top scorer in the Champions League so far this season, even though United Crazy. are now out. Um, and then you have a couple of Barca, Alex Garrido, Carlos Forbes, Angel Alarcon. Uh, for me, oh, the Barcelona ones are really... So, Lamine Yamal and Fermin Lopez and... Oh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Mark Gui, I think his name is. Gui, Mark Gui. Uh, so Fermin Lopez, Mark Gui, uh, Yamin Lamal, the Barcelona youngsters that are coming through are, doing yet again. are doing it. It's been Pedri, it's been Gavi, it's been Ansu Fati, it's been now Lamin Yamal and them lot. So um, Barcelona youngsters having a great start, mainly because Barca can't spend any money and Javi has to play them. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, and then to finish off, uh, before we bring in our guest, um. A ninety eight W wants to know what is the lad's favorite part of Christmas. Ah, uh, ah, what's your favorite part of Christmas, Enzo? To be honest, this year it's just going to be switching off a little bit. No shipments can come in or out. I need to just rest my brain. It's it's eating food and chilling out, being lazy. That's my favorite part. That's your favorite part. Very good. It's um, the lasagna, Jason. It's the lasagna. It's the meat. It's the mortadella, the salami, the prosciutto. <laughs> That's it. Um, okay, I'm trying to think Santa favorite. as well, by the way. Yeah, what a tradition! What a man. Um, my favorite part of Christmas maybe is seeing people that I don't see at all during the year Pop and up. having that five minute conversation and go, like, Oh, oh, yeah, how are you doing? Oh, you're, you're doing that now, okay, great, and then not having to see them again for a couple of years, yeah. Uh, I brilliant. like the kind of weird conversations you have with people um, that you don't usually see at Christmas. Tell me this, Jason. Are you are you a man that goes out with a few friends on Christmas Eve? Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. like that at all. I have people messaging me now going, Christmas Eve, do you want to do this? Yeah. I'm like, no. No, I don't. I have, uh, in, not where I live now, but where my family is from, uh, there's a, a local pub. that uh, mm -mm. Classic tradition. Classic tradition. You, you my problem is... My friends do that, but the local pub is fucking Cusacks on the north side. So I'm like, I'm not. Yeah, that's tough. That's I'm tough. not. I'm not really. I'd love to see us, but not that much. That's how I feel. Yeah, you're not gonna cross the river. No, I'm not crossing the river, and then like trying to get a taxi home Christmas Eve. Like it's a bit yeah. Uh, no, it's different. Really. See, it's it's yes, yeah, that's different. That yeah. No, if you can walk me. around the corner, it's it's no problem. But I I yeah. can tell you now, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't, you wouldn't be hiking uh, away. No. For it. No yeah, way. That, that, yeah, so it's more. In fairness, it's not that I, I wouldn't interact with them. It's more so it's just such a such a bit of a trek that I'm not really up for that yeah. on a day like this. You could probably kind of like be. Um, I think everyone we may not like to admit this, but everyone could draw, get a compass, and draw lines in mm. kind of five kilometer increments. And you, every friend you have fits on one of those lines. Hundred percent. And the line is how far you would go to see them on any given day. And today is not the day. Today I'm just going to let myself relax. Yeah. That's my my plan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you deserve it. Thanks. Um, Thanks Mr. Pop soccer car podcaster. You deserve a break. This one. We um, have uh, the 1.37pm yeah. boys card talk uh, recently announced that they are no longer talking about cards, I guess. Yeah. Um, commiserations to them. Not even congratulations to them, <laughs> should I say. Congratulations to them on a fantastic run. Yeah, people know that I've seen there was an absolute outpouring of love, yeah. respect and admiration. Yeah. For, yeah. for what their podcast has been and has done that it made me kind of wonder about the day the day the soccer United you know, boys hang up their hang up their headphones and their the microphones mm -hmm. if we'll get the same type of a reception I'm not sure we will but, or will um, the community breathe a collective sigh of relief oh they finally Oof, thank god that's so, over I can't believe they got to 200 plus yeah uh, but oh yeah shout out to them it's not easy to podcast all the time um <laughs> it's not no. it's not easy at all so I just wanted to give I know there's definitely crossover listenership so I just wanted to give a bit of love yeah yeah Absolutely. Yeah, to the guys for what they have contributed to the podcasting. What they've achieved. Card space. Card space, should I say. There you go. Uh, and they were always they were always quite fair about giving soccer uh, its, uh, its due. It's flowers. Yeah, they had a lot of time for soccer. 
Um, so nothing but respect. If we had guests, they could have been a guest someday, but we didn't. Absolutely, but we don't. We don't. Um, but we are going to have a guest now, uh, which oh, wow. is uh, Soccer Card Santa uh, coming up. I'm just going to go and get him. Okay. I'm so I'll be it. back in one sec with Soccer Card Santa. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, Santa, we're, uh, we're ready for you now. You ready to come on in? Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Thanks for Soccer Card Santa. Thanks for having me on, Jason. Oh, yeah, no problem, Santa. Just uh, uh, come in here. Um, I'll go in first. Okay, go ahead. Oh, hey, fuck you, man. You're not coming back in. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 here we go. Merry soccer card Christmas, everybody. Hello, Enzo. Hello, Santa. Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, listen, I locked that guy out because I don't like him at all. Brilliant. No, no one, to be honest, it's been a long year, that fella. Yeah, he seemed like tired. So I said, don't bring that fucking energy in here. Get rid of him. Uh, How are you doing, Santa? Soccer card, well, Santa. Uh, you know, I've had, a good, I've had a good year. I've had a good year. I've been collecting. Uh, oh, yeah. Been uh, watching all the soccer card players and the soccer card manufacturers, making sure they've all been good little boys and girls. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I believe there's some questions for me here that the listener sent it. Oh, absolutely. Always is. Okay. Let's have a look here if I can. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Here's Jake the Mailman with a great question for Soccer Card Santa. Hey, Jake wants to know, what is Soccer Card Santa's favorite type of cookie? And I think mm. Jake is American, so I think that means what's my favorite kind of biscuit? Ah. Very cultured oh. Soccer Card Santa. Well, you know, I have to deliver soccer card gifts to all the boys and girls all over the world, so I have to know their culture. So, so what's my favorite kind of cookie? Um, uh, I like a toffee pop. Okay. What's yours? I like the um, custard creams. Oh, oh custard creams. Do you like it's quite a savory choice? You don't like chocolate biscuits, or you do, or I don't mean I don't mind, but of course, very, very, uh, very refined choice, yeah, very rich, yeah. Mm. Um, so you can leave a custard cream or a toffee pop or anything you like for old soccer card Santa on Christmas Eve. What are you bringing this year? Last year, we had some wonderful bundles like a sapphire, it was real joy. Mm hmm. Uh, well, what I definitely you got you some. Gift? I definitely got you a gift. So let me just. I have it here. I definitely have it here. Uh, oh look, look! I have Bundesliga summer signings. Oh wow! Oh, 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 oh. so uh, you can open oh, it wow. on Christmas morning, or I can open it now for you. As you wish, you know best. I'll open it now while we answer the other question. Because I know the kids love Bundesliga for Christmas. Of course, there's Harry Kane's in there. What a what a Christmas gift that would be. Harry Kane. Ho ho ho. Um, okay. <laughs> Next question is from Football Breaker. And he wants to know: hey, soccer card Santa, we got tons of new rookies in the new set, starting with Deco. Lamine Yamal is everyone is who everyone wants, but who do you think is the hidden gem that we're flying under the radar? Have you guys talked about this on the show so far? Yeah, we touched on it. We did. We 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 like the <laughs> other the other Barcelona boys as well. Oh, Fermin Lopez, maybe. Mm. Oh, ho, ho. he's a very good. He's pretty very good. good. Very good player. He's on the nice list. But I'll tell you who's on the naughty list. Barcelona chief executive, Joan Laporta. Oh, my God. I don't like those financial levers. Ho, ho, ho. Okay, this is from Mad City Collector. Okay. Soccer card Santa, are you having more or less fun in the hobby now than two or three years ago? What trends are you seeing in collectors' behaviors that are different from two or three years ago? What do you think, Enzo? I would say I'm personally having different kind of fun. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I can't say it's more or less. Like back two, three years ago, everything you bought went up in value because it was not a lot of products. No one really knew what was going on. It was kind of madness. Oh, now... oh, 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 I hit an autograph. Oh, oh, oh. Grant Leon Ranios, can you see that? 
How does soccer card Santa work this camera? Oh, there we go. Rookie autograph. Oh, ho, ho. Number to 99. Wow, just for me. Just for you, Enzo. You must have been a very good soccer card boy this year. Thank God. Go ahead, you were saying. Yeah, at the start, it was like you buy whatever you bought, everything went up in value. Whereas, like now, two, three years in, I've been collecting more. So I'd say I'm having more fun, but I would say it's different fun. You know? Mm. Mm. That's the way I feel. Collecting, finding things that I like that I'm not planning to sell is, is is different. You know, you get a buzz when you find a card that you're like, oh shit, I want that. You know? I agree. I, I understand. And I can tell I have some insight on this, of course, because I receive everybody's. Uh, yes. Christmas lists and two or three years ago in the hobby, all of the people who were sending me in their soccer card Christmas lists, it was all about prospecting and investing, you know? And they would put mm. it in their Christmas, Dear Santa, for this Christmas I would like, and then they put fire emoji, fire emoji, invest. You know? E they used to say soccer card uh li Christmas list one of one. And um uh but now they're they're collecting more. Oh, so instead of saying, Dear soccer card Santa, I want a box of Champions League Chrome that's going to double in price in the next five years, they say, Dear, dear soccer card Santa, I want the uh, you know, red of 10 sets from Stadium Club Bundesliga. Mm, classic, uh, you know, and I think that's a uh, very good behavior. Oh, yeah, you're liking that. I like that. Uh, I put all the soccer card collectors on my on my nice list. And all those dirty investors on my naughty list. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank God. Just one more question here. Old Santa got me. It's Christmas Eve. It's Christmas Eve. Yeah, you're busy. I should be working. You are working. I am. Hey, this is the job. Dear Soccer Card Santa, who is your rookie of the season for 22-23? Santiago Jimenez, Warren Zaire Emery, Victor Boniface, ho, ho, ho. Outside shout for Matthias Sule. All the best, uh, all the, all of Frosinone Calcio are on the, on the nice list. But if Juventus take them back in January, they'll be getting a bucket of coal. <laughs> and how does Santa feel about Hendrik Leaf autos? Will they hold up when we finally get rookie cards for Hendrik in the Real Madrid kit? That's from Sankey Sports TCG. A lot of mm. questions in there. Okay. Rookie of the year, Julian Alvarez. Yeah, it has to be. Has to be. Uh, although the elves made too many Julian Alvarez rookie cards. <laughs> 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 they got me crazy. <laughs> yes. The elves at Panini, the elves at Panini and the elves at Tops, they were very naughty elves. And how does Santa feel about the Endrick Leaf autos? How do you feel about the Endrick Leaf autos, Santa? Um, I think that's like the perfect. If if any leaf card is going to hold the value, that's the kind of one that would, where they prospect early enough that there's no one else. They play for a specific club that doesn't have other products. So good, I feel good about it. Um, always held back by the fact that it's leaf. It'll be weird seeing his rookie cards in a Real Madrid kit as well. Like it won't feel right. Um, mm. that's where the Club World Cup could have could have really saved a lot of people. Hey, that's a good idea. They should make a Club World Cup set. Talk to the elves. Oh, I should talk to the elves about that. Well, <laughs> I've got to run. It's busy uh, day tomorrow. Busy day tomorrow, so I better let that fucking guy back in, and uh, he can uh, do whatever you guys do. Uh, it's been great seeing you, Enzo. It's been wonderful seeing you again this year, Santa Claus. And uh, I'll be sure to drop this Bundesliga summer signings auto down your chimney. Thank you so much. It means a lot. Okay. Uh, goodbye. Oh, 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 yeah, I mean, I've never met him before, and I thought it, it was going to be a real treat, but uh, not guy's kind of a prick. Yeah, not great. Keeps giving oh. me thunders league and stuff. Oh, my God. <sighs> well, 
What hey, a Christmas Alan. episode this has been. We've done it again. We've done it again. We want to thank everybody for all the support in uh, 2023, whether it be the podcast, the store, buying card show tickets, doing deals with us at card shows, uh, whatever it may be. Engaging on social. Engaging on social, signing up to the mailing list. Um, leaving a YouTube comment, whatever, whatever way you've 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 uh, Spotify review, podcast yeah. review, um, sharing your Spotify raft with us, anything at all. We just want to thank everyone so much for the support. Even those people who are who I know listen and don't have social media and occasionally send us an email or don't send us an email. Just if you listen or do anything at all, we're so grateful, um, and we hope you have a, a very nice uh, holiday season and uh, and a lovely new year. It's very nice, Jason. I share. We're back on. The 8th of January. 8th of January. We're gone for two weeks. We're going to be in card show mode after Christmas. Yep. Back on the 8th. Back on the 8th. See you then, gang. See ya.